Yo, what's going on, believers? Happy Friday. It's been an amazing week so far. Hope it's been the same case for you. Take a quick minute, read over the risk disclaimer. Want to look at the economic calendar real quick. Just highlighting the things that I've been waiting for here. Federal, with the Federal Reserve interest rate decision, they raised it 0.25% from 5.25 to 5.5. They paused last time, so this time they did go ahead and, and do another increase. And uh, this was something that was very important for me and my analysis. And so now let's look at the charts and see, as today is the last day of the month, what is um what the week looks like, and how did that affect the week? So uh, with the dollar up. She's supposed to have done this at midnight, so I slide this over my Friday marker. And so, uh, yellow line, of course, always weekly opening price. So, dollar was above weekly opening price, as you can see over here on the right side on the daily. Traded into this liquidity void here, rejected lower into this daily inefficiency, whipsaw back out from there higher essentially making a low and then a high of the week prior to today, stretching above yesterday's high. And this was that move here though, when it dropped down into the daily. Let me just drag this out. All right, so it dropped down into here, found support, rallied. And now since midnight, right, it pushed, created a new high of the week, has since dropped lower. And so what I have measured here is the range of the week from low to high, looking at that 50%. As far as anything below that is discount. So right on the uh, monthly inefficiency high, which could very easily act as support. Um, this is like essentially an area that if price does drop down, very interested in seeing how these this black line is green line are treated as far as price action is concerned. But today's Friday. I'm not about to be here much. So whatever does happen would need to be between 830 and like 915 ish. Because when the 8.30 volatility always enters the market and then at 9 o'clock there's some news today. So between uh, that like 45 minute window, would like to see some sort of volatility pick up. See if it even has a willingness to go down there. Because while it's going down there, I would anticipate things like gold, AU, GU, EU will be able to rally as well as the indices. But if it is able to get back above 101, 707 and close, which is essentially be right uh, potentially inverting this inefficiency here for support. And then, so it'll be a couple of stack support levels, um, potentially that it will be able to utilize for then the opposite of what I just mentioned. So instead of AU, GU, EU, gold and indices rallying, then they should be allowed to drop. If that's the case, if it's able to get back about 101, 707 and find support there, that level is the midpoint of a weekly inefficiency so it's a very dynamic level on a lower time frame now looking at um s p for the week so also gotta drag my friday over midnight right there okay so s p right from the open just straight bullish and then yesterday had a drop retracement Printed a new low of the week, and as you can see here, so retracing off of that could also measure up this range here, right? And seeing how it's essentially in the premium now, as it has traded back above the 50% of this range from low to high, so could potentially consolidate here. Um, it was just why I'm saying I'm demanding something that I want to see happen within that 45 minute window. Otherwise, I'm going to call it a week. It's been a great week so far. Just wanted to add some more content in a sense. Um, it's the last day of the month. Well, last trading day of the month. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to be able to put something up and be able to talk about what has happened so far this week with the uh, interest rate decision coming out on Wednesday. So that's S&P. NASDAQ. So also need to drag Friday over. And then, so NASDAQ. 
bullish, right? Had a retracement, another run, drop back down. It's really utilizing this weekly inefficiency a lot. Once, twice, three times is hit that level on a daily chart and reject it higher. So some beautiful opportunities there. What I also have measured with these green dash lines is this inefficiency, 25, 50, 75% of it. So essentially it has almost filled it all up. The low here is 911.25. The high here is 904. So about seven and a quarter points shy of actually filling in this range. And then it's also above here. This is a, 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 uh, a volume imbalance so there's no body there just wicks so there's volume imbalance so there's any type of momentum higher i'm definitely expecting for it to fill in this volume imbalance which is a nice 200 point uh push if it's going to rally but again it's friday it's the end of the month um this could be something that's saved for next week so that's why it's like there's no need to feel any like fomo right fear of missing out it's been a great week already and uh, i'm just trying to see like i say if i can find something that is very obvious and makes sense nothing crazy not looking for any swings just a little quick scalp to somewhere that makes sense to be honest um and then this is from the four hours so i believe i can get rid of that it's kind of useless now yes yeah, so i'll get rid of that it's back to the hourly and so uh this is dow jones this is where my attention is today honestly uh so in similar fashion right just rallying and then thursday drop retracement another drop was it able to print the lower a new low of the week? Yeah, so it also printed a new low of the week. And so if I take this tool here from high to low, and same thing like NASDAQ, right? It is at that point where it is already at a premium, which is valid. Anything above 50%, especially after a massive drop like this, um, I'm not always demanding that it get all the way back up. Higher into the premium, just above 50% can be valid. And so uh, now there is that first injection of volatility. 8.30 is here. So I'm excited to see what type of uh, potential plays are offered. Um, gold here. Same thing. I'm going to put Friday on. So a lot of consolidation. Gold was really fucked up until the interest rate decision was able to rally, albeit just kind of also choppy, but a nice rally up to the June opening price. Consolidation and then a savage drop at 7 yesterday. Filling in this weekly inefficiency here. Finding support on the low end. Rallying above the high. Back to this old low. Finding support at the high of the, the inefficiency and then running this high. And so as far as gold is concerned... Um, the weekly range is here, high to low. So if it is to potentially run up to um, the midpoint, it's got a decent low 70 pips or so um, potential. And then I'm going to go back to the dollar chart. And go back to the 30 and the 4. Hour. So dollar closed below 101.707 on a 30 minute, but this is a whole new 30 minutes. Like I said, this next 45 minutes are going to be important. So allowing for it to um, start to make a move higher here, potentially. If not, then I'm looking forward to get down into this range here. And then it could also just move sideways again. It's Friday, right? So if it's not obvious, um, I don't want it. I don't want no parts of it if it's not obvious. So, another area, though, that I have been watching 
for this in particular is actually this range. So I like this high here because that was a high that traded into and uh, lower time frame inefficiency up in here. And I was actually the play I took yesterday. On my, I only took about 150 points out of the like total 350 or 400 that were offered, but still a very solid um, trade. And so what I'm seeing here is right. So once it dropped this yellow line, of course, weekly opening price, right? Consolidates, drops down to it one more time, pushes this high retraces runs higher but my main focus is this range i've identified and anything above 50 percent is what i would consider expensive or premium and so there is this inefficiency here which it has i believe maybe it didn't close above it yet so no it, it wasn't able to close above it just yet um so this inefficiency from the 15 minute and then, uh, so right one below. <laughs> right, so that's that. And then the other one is here. So I have to take this one into consideration because there's two of them that stuck out to me. This being the higher one, there's no guarantee it will get here. But for any potential setups here, I do have to take that into account, that uh, exposure here, that it may want to run into this. If higher prices is on the agenda, right, it makes a lot of sense for it to go and fill up this inefficiency there. But so far, seeing a nice reaction here on a lower time frame, um, it's looking very good, to be honest. And uh, I'm only looking to take it back down to i believe just back down to here so i'm only looking for about a 100 point move so this would be my take profit and there is a level on a one minute that I want to see it get below and act as resistance. It's going to be this level right here. I want to see price stay below this this level here um, on a closing basis. So once it gets that close below it, I don't want to see it get back above. And we'll see how this goes. So essentially what the setup would be as far as once now it's confirmed, right? So any retracement back up to here would be a re-entry. I'm already in, but it would be a re-entry. And the stop loss, because of the nature of what it is, I'll need to just take into account this first inefficiency here on the one minute. So I'll use basically just a high of that, that 15 minute range, right? So this would be my stop loss, a 51 point stop loss. And then with TP being down here, that's an 86 point TP from there. So like almost a, a two to one, a little bit less than a two to one. But as you can see, it's getting very heavy here. And uh, let me pull up the 15 minute over here. And seeing that, again, it was not able to close above this 15 minute inefficiency, although it did color outside the lines, right? It's allowed to do that. Um, now, just seeing the response here as it digs lower. And uh, dollar is currently above that 101.707 level. Just to show you really quick so you can see on this one minute chart it's been engaging with that level it is currently above it though right now and so looking for continuation on 30 what i also like is that so they left this fair value gap here now if it doesn't trade back into here then i'm going to view that as a breakaway gap and then it may actually go much lower than where i have my uh my target at but again, it's Friday, right? I just want something that's super easy. And uh, just looking at it from the 15 minute time frame, right? This was the most recent swing low from this time frame, just taking it to right the, the lowest body. So getting out before the swing point. So possibly missing out on like 12, 13 points here. But just to spare myself, 
the uh, mental stress, if it is to come down to this level and reject, and I haven't gotten out yet, right, I'm just going to get out here. Like I said, it's to spare myself that, that mental capital being spent, uh, wondering uh, if this level is going to be some sort of a, a deep retracement uh, beginning there or whatnot. But so far, so good. At this point, the only reason why I won't put my uh, stops, well, adjust my stop loss just yet is because it hasn't interacted with the breaker yet. So I want to see it engage with the breaker. I'll actually add another entry. And then, of course, like I said, if it starts to push through it on the one minute, even closing above the breaker, that's going to be problematic for me. Um, and I'll probably actually close all my positions and, and close a week. But sitting in good profit on all of the sale entries so far on US 30 and just got to allow time to do its part. And uh, that's the hardest part is waiting sometimes. So adding the position in there as it hits the breaker. So it's very aggressive right now. But this is exactly kind of what I want to see though. Because what this is doing is inducing buyers. So those buyers would be beautiful counterparties to the sales that I'm in. And uh, the next leg lower should actually be much faster than this one like i said there's news at nine o'clock though so this initial push here with the 8 30 it did run and clear some sell side sell side here sell side here cleared all of that uh and so if i'm wrong here like i said it'll violate the breaker and it will fill in this gap here so i have two opportunities to get out before full stop if that's the case so right first indication is a close above the breaker second is a complete fill of this uh inefficiency here and so uh basically right here right this level here so <laughs> would be it filling up that gap All right, so it's filled up the gap. And uh, the other indices, NASDAQ, SPX, are also bullish right now. Um, they did drop initially. NASDAQ, not as much as S&P and 30, but it did run some sell side on a lower time frame. Um, and then just looking over here on the right side, right, this is showing the price of the dollar is below that 101, 707 level again. So not bullish like I would like it to be. But another thing to consider and why, right, the stop loss needed to be here is because on this drop down here, running this sell side, it left a few inefficiencies. This run back higher, essentially, right, balanced all of that imbalance. And if it's to continue lower from here, that would make a lot of sense for me as well, just because there's no other, as far as this one minute time frame is concerned, reference points inside of this range. So if it's going to drop, it's done what it needs to do to drop already. If it's not going to drop, then of course it'll run up to the high of the pink and it'll hit that stop loss. So. Do, do, do. 
So the other one is still bullish right now. Currently, they're actually pushing higher. So I wonder if that will drag uh, 30 up with them. It is finding support on this breaker. So that is a bad sign for bearishness. Like I said, this was the first indication of me being wrong. Was it getting back above this breaker? But also what I have to keep in mind is it's a one minute breaker. So not my favorite time frame to identify them on. Those are usually a lot more fickle um, than the higher time frame ones. And uh, this 15 minute inefficiency here is really the only thing that's giving me uh, confidence that it's still possible for 30 to drop and so again just a matter of time So again, dollar chart, right? Little cheat code to watch this up. See it's above that 101.707. So above 101.707, I'm confident in the continuation lower. Below that, not as much confident, but uh, so far it's pretty decent as far as uh, the 15 minute and some of the one minute ranges in here. Uh, what I do want to now start to identify though are problem areas. So even here on a one minute, there are inefficiencies here. Not that I'm looking at these as any significance, but in this run higher here, there was one here that I want to identify. And if price can get below here and then it acts as a resistance, that will also right give me a lot of confidence about the continuation lower. But as you can see, currently, it's acting as support. So, again, just a matter of time. Got to be patient here. Dollar's back below that 101.707 level. So, dollar is sitting in a consolidation currently. Let me just go over there and show it real quick, right, at that level. See how it's just working that level, essentially, right now. But, um, usually, when it does this, it's something like news coming out so that news will give it the strength it needs to push higher or lower and so at this point violating this blue shaded area so i can turn it brown and then hopefully it then immediately acting as resistance um that should be enough with the news coming out for 30 to just run to that low hanging fruit very easy objective I'm not asking it to do too much at all the other indices are still bullish though just to take a peek at those nasdaq pushing higher here s p 
also pushing here. So it may be difficult for 30 to make the run that I'm asking it to do. His cousins are not about the life of uh, any lower prices, it seems like, currently. So definitely use that fair value gap there as support very nicely. Again, that's not one that I would necessarily myself been uh, utilizing. Doesn't fit my uh, my rules as far as what I would like to see from the fair value gaps that I use for entry. And now on the one minute chart, so challenging this level here which was a high at any efficiency so anything above there like i said it's most likely going to tap into the other any efficiency which is great though uh because like i said as far as the overall risk um for this right utilizing for example the 15 minute time frame this one like i said needs to be taken into account so and honestly um the high of this candle here would have to be taken into consideration for a stop and that's just too far though right so i wouldn't be wanting to get in here using the stop loss here so that's why this isn't a good setup for me personally especially if i'm only trying to target something within this range because i may i'm i'm not too confident about it making another low for the week after how aggressively it dropped to create that low yesterday so I'll leave this low alone for now as the week and the month are about to close. And uh, just using this reference point here, like I said, from the high to the low of the main leg of that drop, anything above 50% would be a good sell opportunity. So as the 15 minutes still hasn't been able to close above this range here, it still has the opportunity to at least make that run down here. Which is all I need. I don't. I don't need SPX to run lower. I don't need Nasdaq to run lower. All I need is the asset that I'm trading, which is US 30, to run lower. So far, as far as the 15 minute is concerned, still looking good. Five minute, same thing, right? No five minute closes above that range. And then just going down from there. Four. So the four minute had a close above, but then look at the bearish and golfing that followed. Three minute, same thing, close above, massive bear candle. This little inefficiency here though, actually I don't like that. Um, currently price has gotten above it on this three minute. So this is a level that can already be sh shaded brown. And so similar to on a one minute chart, right? How I was saying I wanna see it violate that blue shaded area this was a initially a pink shaded area violated with the close here found support within it took out this swing high here but now as you can see getting back in that range so i'm going to watch the three minute here see if it can get a close back below that
So I'm looking for the close of this three minute. The close is going to be important. What it's doing right now, irrelevant. It can color outside the lines and then close back in that range and keep going higher. So I want to see it close below. Ideally with some momentum, not like just below it, like by a point, but like actually give me some some space so that a potentially um, so that potentially uh, another fair value gap can be created between the high of the three minute counter before this one. I mean, be so another fair value gap can be created between the low of the three minute candle before this one and the high of the next one that prints. So looking good, got some momentum pushed away. Uh, there's a potential, like I said, for a fair value gap to be created here. Um, but with that push like that, pretty much almost tapped this low. So did, okay, so immediately filled that in. So I will hope for this to be an immediate rebalance, essentially ran by side, drop down again, potentially creating an order block here and reclaiming this fair value gap, get that immediate rebalance and then continue lower. But now let's look at the tool real quick since we have it just yet. And, and then the one minute, back to the one minute. And so the one minute did get a close below, but unlike the three minute, Right, I didn't get it as aggressive of a close. But if it can use the high end of that and act as and it acts as resistance, then it's still valid. But not looking like the case. Well, I mean still I gotta wait for the candles to close, so let me not say that. Uh because we've already engaged the high. And this candle within the next 45 seconds could very easily get aggressive moving lower. Looking over to the right though, dollar is still below that 101707 level. So getting that aid from the dollar being bullish is not something that's on my side today. Um, so this is strictly just one of those moments where 30 may have a price run on this agenda that is not confirmed across the board with the others. Sometimes NASDAQ could do that same thing. SPX is the least likely to do that. Whereas it's, it tends to either consolidate when the other two are doing opposite of each other or um, it'll do what the others are doing. Like that's typically the characteristics of SPX. That's why I love it. Um, but today, because I saw this opportunity in 30, that was my focus, a super easy target in my opinion. And a lot of reference points that made sense, just uh, considering the, the 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 location and within the range that they exist in. So the 15 minute inefficiencies here being above right 50 percent of this range made it very um, easy for me to kind of frame this setup. But a lot of times this will happen too, where as you can see, as it's pushing here, it was a black candle looked very bullish looked like it was going to continue into the next inefficiency wasn't able to do so though right eventually turned around and closed actually lower than that range so this was that first indication as far as the 15 minute was concerned that okay cool it probably is going to uh, run lower at the very least there's also this inefficiency here that i'll make sure i take a partial in right here so this is also a level to well the high end of it is a level to to monitor for me at least so uh, uh, that, that, bow. okay so this would be a partial for sure taking a partial there about 35 points above target so definitely a great place to take a partial um, and so far so good as far as that brown area acting as resistance. Why is this still the first thing that is highlighted? Not a big fan of that, but, uh, still hasn't gone anywhere though. Right. And then also just to really, because I'm on a one minute chart and like, why the hell not? Right. Um, there's this volume imbalance here. So just found support here in that, that volume imbalance. Look at the bodies of the candle. Back into this one minute inefficiency. 
which is initially it was a bullish inefficiency. So just because it closed below here, finding this other reference point, acting as support, getting back above there, and then it's reclaiming it and acting as support again, um, definitely not a good sign. Most likely going to at least run for this high here. But if it leaves this high intact, then it has the potential to become an intermediate term high as far as that sp specific swing point. And then that would actually do very well as far as um, I'm definitely looking for this slower to be taken out. And this actually would probably be another area of partial just because of the fact that it's being difficult. Dollar is not giving me the sponsorship I want to see above that 101.707. So although in profit still on these trades, it's uh, more difficult than I would like it to be. But that's a nice close as far as the body of the candle, respecting the range. So at least not a bad sign, not a necessarily good sign, though. Only good signs are going to be down close candles, uh, violating up close candles and violating old lows. <laughs> Those are the only characteristics that I really care to see. Um, that news comes out here in about 20 seconds, though. So if it's going to go, uh, the news, it's uh, inflation related news also. So if it's going to go, it's got all the reference points that it needs already done what I would need it to do at those levels. Now it's just about dollar picking up. As you can see, now it's at that 101.600 level. So um, I want to see that start to press back up that 101.707. And then this should easily, very easily run lower. And then let me go ahead and set my alert here. Um, I like that volatility at the beginning right there. As far as uh, them spikes get people jumping in and uh, the good counterparty for the opposite side. So I'm just put that little ego stroke. Once them alerts go off, let me know TP got smacked. Um, but still, it can color outside the line. So although bold black candle above the range, it has not closed up there yet. Right. So there's still no bodies officially up there on a closing basis. And so. All of that volatility, the push higher, like I said, people will chase that. And then here's a cool thing. So there's this volume imbalance there. Watch this. So there's this other one here, which it pretty much just traded into. Right there, you see? And then again, right there. So dollar is very bearish. Now it's at 101,500. So like I said, definitely not getting a sponsorship um, that I wanted from the dollar chart. The only reason still with 30 is until it violates this brown line at this point and the pink shaded area, I'm going to stick to my conviction that it wants to go lower. Um, the cousins are still moving higher, as I mentioned already. But 30 is definitely allowed to do its own thing once in a while. And uh, because I've seen that happen so many times, that's the only reason why I'm still going to stick with this bias. Um, well, that on top of just the things that I've been showing over the past, you know, 30 minutes or so, the signatures and things like that I've been seeing from uh, price delivery. So one more time, tapping environment balance. Now, finally, taking out this high. So a swing highs has been taken out, which buy side is resting above that. Like I said, the people that are rushing in to buy that. And once it dropped down right here, another rally higher above that high, people are now like, oh, okay, cool, it is buying and jumping in again. So a lot of buy interest here to pair with potential sell orders. But on a closing basis, um, just want to see how does it close in regards to this yellow shaded area here. So it's got about 15 seconds left. But then just referencing also the brown area, right? It did close above the brown area. It got to open and close above the brown area. So potentially this is now support, which is also problematic. Like I said, um, I want to see down, I mean, up close candles violated. And then I want to see old lows violated as well. And so this is not a violation. This is a sweep. 
right? Trade above a swing high, reject it. That's a sweep. I don't want to see a trade below this low here, for example, and then reject. I want to see a trade below this low, close below it with a, a bold body, and then next candle or a couple of candles, I want to do the same thing with this low. And if that signature happens, then I have no doubt in my mind, 35481 will be reached today. It's not asking for much. It's US 30. It'll move 100 points in a minute. So I'm asking it to do it in a few minutes. Very reasonable. But I'd say about another 10, 15 minutes here of the recording. Um, like I said, about 8.30 to 9.15 is where I wanted to see this move really manifest itself or prove itself to me. It's having a really, really rough time doing that just essentially accumulating here for a push higher so i do have to keep that in mind as well that um that other inefficiency above is still a potential um draw for price to get to and then looking at that last 15 minute candle right it closed inside of the range of the one before it so the high and the low of this candle are going to be sensitive to me and so what i'll actually do is No, I should do default tool. My default tool. So I put a line at the high there. And I'll just make these lines white. And then there as well. So that I know that these these levels are super sensitive. And so this is that actual low. So this is perfect. So like I said, this is a low of the inside bar. And I want it to close below this swing low right aggressively i don't want to see a reject now that it's taking out that low i don't want to see a reject like it did here above the eye i don't want to see that i want to see it close below that low and then a few candles later or next candle even i needed to get below this white line in the same way aggressive on a closing basis don't want to see it wick below it and then close higher once it close below it so i can get those signatures still got about 15 seconds for it to close below here and then give it a few minutes right to get below the white line and shortly after that i would anticipate a nice dramatic drop um down towards my target but so a rejection closed above that low i don't want to see that um but it's still looking pretty decent as far as that candle itself didn't close bullish or anything like that so not too concerning to be honest but also not something that add any confidence right it just now i'm still pretty pretty neutral nothing's changed i'm still looking for that same signature now with this potentially setting up as a swing low but there's still a lot of time left 30 seconds left for this to turn around and do what i asked this candle to do um but with this setting up as a swing low that same signature right i want to see um once price gets below here i want to see it close down there and there's still no guarantee it's got a, a low here a higher low here and if this confirms the swing low that'll be a third higher low um and then it may actually make a push up towards that high so i'm keeping that in mind as well just want to get a little bit closer here so you see how engaged that low one more time was pretty bullish but then closed lower inside of that brown range still so over the next seven eight minutes I don't want to allow for it to do what I've asked it to do still. Um, but at that point, like I said, I'll end the recording and then I'll manage this beast in the shadows without anybody watching. Without anybody having any opportunity to learn from my thoughts and views about what's going on. But yeah, so just patience. Went for one minute candles to close to give me information. Dollar is still very weak. It's now below 101.500. So in that 101.400 range. Taking a peek at the cousins. So starting to consolidate a little bit here. Over there in the cousins. Um, but on a lower time frame. On a higher time frame still looking healthy and bullish. On like 30, as you can see, 
the Cousins got up close candles on the 15 minute interval, whereas US 30 down close candles, but it's also in a situation where it's very choppy, could be accumulating. All right, had a phone call there. But as you can see, so like I said, the concern was that it not closing with any momentum below here. It did that twice, once, twice. 
So took out that lobe here, then took out both of those lobes here. And then immediately we're seeing down closed candles get violated as opposed to up closed candles get violated. So I want to see all these up closed candles be closed below with a lot of momentum. Instead, we're seeing down closed candle close above, right? Down closed candle close above. Then the series of down closed candles here, um, which is also right that high end of that uh, 15 minute inside bar. So that candle still has a little bit over a minute left. Um, and if none of these, this candle or the next one doesn't engage with that line there, then essentially it, it's another inside bar. So an inside bar inside of an inside bar. And so then the high and low of this range also then um, become significant to me. All right. So then I just do that same play here. So, right, of course, this was the lowest low below here that didn't violate it like I would, I would have liked it to, to do for confidence with the continuation lower. And then um, it's still a lot of time left for it to run this high and actually engage with this level. But then, so on the flip side of that, right? So if it takes out the high and it doesn't continue, basically find support at this high and it goes back inside the range, then I'm definitely gonna be looking forward to reach down into the lows here. So still very possible. Um, it's just sometimes, like I said, 30 has a mind of its own. It wants to do all of this nonsense. The cool thing about it is while dollar was dropping, as you can see, it was in the 101.7s, now it's in the 101.4s. Um, while dollar was dropping, it was not rallying like the other indices. So that's in itself indicative of it having a potential um, desire to go lower because if it wanted to go higher, while dollar was dropping and is dropping still, as you can see, those numbers are still getting lower. Um, as dollar is dropping, actually would be the best time for it to then make its move higher to this inefficiency, for example, because dollar has moved quite a bit to the downside, right? And as you can see, um, 30 wasn't exactly too excited about running higher. But here now, as you can see, this is that 15 minute range, right? So now right back again near the high end of it. After dropping down below it, nothing really a reference here on a 15 minute time frame. Um, but with that volatility dropping down, but then making these higher lows as it runs back higher. So now that, it, like I said, it's gotten above both of those levels. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Uh, well, if it's still to be bearish, right? I don't want to see it find support at these levels. I want to see it drop right back into the range. And then I'll be looking at a lot of these same levels, not so much the volume imbalances. Those are a little bit less important in my opinion but for sure the brown shaded area and then i do want to just because it's the nearest right this range here as well um to then potentially start to act as resistance also this brown line here so all of those levels but that's going to be it for the recording hope that uh feel to learn something here today i know that like i said 30 was a little bit more difficult compared to the other ones, right? Where dollars dropping lower, they're running higher, which is what I expect to see. Um, but lots of reasons, like I said, for 30 to go lower. And so uh, still gonna just be monitoring that for another 15, uh, maybe 15, 30 minutes here before I get started with the rest of my day. So shout out to the believers, shout out to the dreamers, shout out to the homies that inspired me to be better each and every day. I love you, I appreciate you more than you know. I'll catch you on the next one, peace.